Uh, my name is Chris Miller. I am the career advisor for the WSU Global Campus. Um, thank you for joining for this uh, webinar that is focusing on career resources uh, for WSU Global Campus students. Um, specifically, I'll be highlighting there are a lot of resources that are available to all uh, WSU students across systems, but it's important uh, for me to point out the resources that are available virtually online for Global Campus students. Um, so again, thanks for joining. This is um, some this is a topic I like to address every year or two, just to make sure that um, any new students have um, the option of finding out more about some of the things that are available to them as they progress along with their academic journey and um, plan for their careers afterward. Okay. So when I start these um, webinars, I always take a, a look, a snapshot, uh, a look at this, I should say, career development process snapshot. This image is, I, th I think, a pretty good look um, at, you know, the career development process in general because it is a circle. Um, it's a, a cycle of, of growth and decay um, over the, that happens many times over the course of someone's career development where they, um, they get interested in some kind of an occupation um, or they're, you know, they're finding out new things that they're good at or things that they don't want to do or they learn more uh, about some other job and then, you know, they, they go through a job search and they get a job and they work that job for however many years and then perhaps the, the period of decay starts where they lose interest in that area and maybe they have a period of growth in a different one. So uh, this, this career development process uh, image looks at the four main areas, I think, um, of career development where when I'm talking about career sources, resources specifically tonight, um, you know, we're kind of all over the board here. So we're, I'll be touching on some things to help um, students know themselves. So career assessments, uh, some tools to help you explore your options, um, some resources that help you while you're in that getting focused or taking action stage. So um, preparing a resume or preparing for a job interview. So we're all over the place tonight. Uh, usually, I, I would say that most of the topics hit on one or two areas only, but tonight we're all, we're all over this, this career development process circle. Um, so in terms of the main resource that's available to you as a Global Campus student, it's me, uh, your career advisor. Um, and so these are some of the, the topics that I help students with. I help them um, with career assessment so they can assess what they're good at or what they're interested in um, to help them find potential job matches. Uh, I help them with academic major selection. So this is for prospective students who are coming in and looking at which, career, which uh, academic majors are a good fit for them based on their career interests or for any student who is um, switching their major. Uh, job search strategies once they're, you know, um, hopefully a year away from graduating, they're starting to think about uh, engaging in some job search strategies. And so I help students identify what is working for, for other students and what is uh, what are effective job search strategies. Um, help them with networking, so locating networking events, uh, preparing for networking events. Um, resume review is another one of the big things I do for students. Um, I help them get ready for interviews and do graduate school research and just general career resource referral. I refer them to things that been could be helpful for them based on, you know, what their background is and what they're interested in doing. So I am um, your main resource and uh, I'll have my contact information uh, at the end, but my email address is cmiller66 at wsu.edu, just to put it out there right now. Um, so yeah, I am your main resource and these are some of the common career um, advising topics. Another option for students is a course that I facilitate every semester. It's offered um, fall, spring, and summer, and it's called University 301. Um, and it's a career planning course. It's one credit, and it has four main areas. It's kind of a, a breakdown, um, a slower career counseling process, I would say, that breaks down those four career development areas over the course of a semester, whichever semester it is. So the first part is looking at career assessment. So it helps students look at what they're interested in, what they're good at, what's important to them with work, and also their, um, their work personality. Uh, it's helpful for 
uh, researching job opportunities, the second part of the class, based on their career assessment results and also just, you know, what their, their academic major is or maybe what their background is. Um, uh, for preparing for a job search in the third unit, in the last unit of the class, students will submit a mock job application. Um, so they can actually find a job that they are interested in pursuing and create a resume and um, cover letter, letter of interest and things like that for that application and get feedback on that. So that's University 301 that I um, offer online every semester. Um, for job and internship listings, uh, Handshake is the main job uh, posting board for the university across the university system. It's for all WSU students. Um, and also many, many universities use this throughout the nation. So uh, inside Handshake, there are um, hundreds of opportunities and so I'll do a, a quick, I'll, I'll jump over there for a second to show you a quick search. Um, just to give you an idea of how you look for a job in Handshake, what it looks like. Um, and then uh, after that, I'll show you the, the Center for Civic Engagement website, which is to look at it from a volunteering perspective. So if it's, you know, if it's applicable to your, your field, um, you need to get some experience in some kind of a service-based area. Um, volunteering opportunities are a great way to do that and the Center for Civic Engagement helps WSU students set that up so global students can find opportunities in their area wherever they live. So let me jump over to Handshake first. Bear with me while I share my screen. Okay, so the first place I wanna take you here is the Academic Success and Career Center website. This is the Pullman Campus Career Center and Academic Advising Center. Um, there's still a lot of good information here for global campus students. Um, so looking at the career services part here to find Handshake. So on the left-hand menu under career services, I'm gonna go down to Handshake. It says student job site. Um, I just click on the, the little Handshake icon here to go in to enter and you'll have to create an account when you first sign in. Um, this is what the homepage looks like for me. For This is probably a little different than a student view. But right now I wanna look at the job section and later I'll jump back in and show you the uh, event section too. But on the left side menu, again, the drop down menu under jobs. Um, it just starts to list all the jobs that are available. Um, uh, but all the filters are up top. So all these little drop down tags up here or, or what you kind of want to start with. So just to do a sample search for someone, um, I will do academic major, um, maybe major group, let's see. Uh, yeah, I want to do academic, I don't want to do this one. I want to do major group uh, to get the different academic concentration areas. Um, and let's see, what is something that it would be relevant for global campus students, I have an idea. I'm gonna go down to H, human and child development. So because this would be an area that's relevant to human development majors, potentially relevant to psychology, sociology, um, and social sciences students, um, let's do a search just to see what's in here right now. And I'll scroll down just to get an idea of the number in general. Um, share bar. So uh, results per page, so let's refine this to say 100 results per page. And so let me know how many pages there are, just to give me an idea. And like I said, this is a national site. So 10, there are, um, you know, around 100, or I'm sorry, around 1,000, there are 100 per page. Um, around 1,000, so I would assume 900 some um, jobs here throughout the nation for people with this, interest area of human and was it child development, I believe. Um, but let's just say, to look at something more local. Um, I will look at Spokane just because it's my hometown. Um, so for Spokane, what do we got here? For Spokane and for human and child development, there are 30 opportunities, 30 job opportunities listed here. And so these will be a, you know, a blend of job and internship full-time and part-time, you can see that middle column here, employment type, it says full-time for a lot. There were some that were part-time though. Um, so just as an example of um, what you will find in Handshake, like I said, this is the main job posting board for the entire university. So as a global campus student, this is the main tool you'll wanna use. Um, 
the last three days we've had the career expo. So it's the, um, the career fair for all WSU campuses. Um, and because of the situation this year, everything was virtual. Um, so the last three days, they've had their first uh, three-day virtual career fair event. Um, and so there have been a lot of jobs and opportunities listed in here recently. But it's been my experience that even when it's not an online career fair, um, you know, they still use this site to post all the job and internship postings for WSU students in here. So this is still the main resource for you for that. Um, the, other, the other place I wanted to show you from the, the volunteering aspect, if you need to gain more experience as you're finishing up your, your undergraduate degree or whatever degree you might be pursuing, and, and it's relevant, the Center for Civic Engagement is here to help global campus students find opportunities in their area um, to volunteer. So uh, under, I guess students is a good place to start. There's a global students tab there, again, on the left-hand menu. There's a little video here that you can watch about how the Center for Civic Engagement has helped other global campus students in the past. Um, one of the things I would point out is, I think is a really cool section um, under Get Engage. I'm gonna go to the, the, computer, the Community Partners map. So you can just get an idea of some things that already exist in the system for volunteer opportunities that you can just look regionally from wherever you are to see what's there. And um, there's contact information listed for many of these places if you just go over the icons um, and go in there. So you can see names, contact names, phone numbers, emails for any, uh, for most of these places. I don't know if it's for all of them or not. Um, and if you don't see one listed where you're at, still try if you're interested in volunteering, or reach out to the Center for Give Civic Engagement. They might have some ideas about things you can do in your area. So that's a really cool. Um, opportunity for students as well. All right, back to, to the presentation here to make sure that's where I want to be. Okay, yep, that's all I had there. Um, in terms of online career events, I want to highlight, again, handshakes in there. Um, you know, what you're attending right now, um, an online career event through Global Connections. Uh, I want to show you the video vault where you find recordings of any um, of any events that you may have missed. Um, the career guide blog, I post a, a lot of, um, you know, virtual events that are going on for global campus students on the career guide blog. I'll show you where that is. And um, also the alumni association. So even if you haven't graduated yet, even if you just started, there are usually a lot of um, career events throughout the year that are open to all WSU students and al alumni and students. So anyone who's a current student can, can attend most of those events too. So let me jump back over and show you first uh, the Connections website where you may have already been, I would assume, to register for this, but mostly to show you that where the video vault is also. Um, so if I didn't say before, the Center for Civic Engagement website is cce.wsu.edu. Um, the Connections website is connections.wsu.edu, and then there is the calendar of events to just see what's going on um, throughout the month. And, um, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory where you can find things about, you know, the goings on for global campus students, not just career-based, of course, but a lot of other, other great events for all students, for, for global campus students. Um, but also the video vault where you, can, you should go if there's anything you may have missed uh, that you know you wanted to attend to and you didn't get a chance to, or if you're just looking to find, um, find, find some videos about things that you're interested in exploring more. Um, so I'm gonna highlight the career development area under video categories. Where you see some of the past webinars that I've done and other people have done for, for all of WSU, parts of WSU, Just Global Campus, you know, different target audiences here. Um, and so a lot of different career topics that may or may not be relevant for you. So this is where you go to find those videos. Um, the Career Guide blog is on our main website. is the easiest way to get there, online.wsu.edu. Again, on the left-hand menu, Global Campus blog. Um, you know, there are a lot, there have been a lot of online career opportunities so far this semester, just over the last month. And so I've been posting like crazy here, uh, I, just about once a day. Uh, but you can see some of the things that, that have been going on. Um, there's also, you can sign up to receive notifications when there's a career topic that's posted. 
On the right hand menu under categories, there's a career section. So just to show you specific careers, um, events that we've had that I've posted about. So that's the career guide blog. There are a lot of other um, categories there that you'll find information about too. So awards, announcements, um, student news, faculty news, student stories, and things like that. Let's see, also um, another, another biggie is back to Handshake, which I showed you how to get to before through the Academic Success and Career Center website, ASCC.wsu.edu. Um, if you go back into Handshake, so I've shown you the job section, also on the left-hand menu, events and fairs recently, where the career fair information was, um, but some other upcoming ones uh, are listed there. But I'm just looking at the virtual events, which even before, before COVID, there were always a lot of events available, but now there are just, you know, 10 times as many as there, there were in the past. Um, so there are a lot of specific company information sessions. So if there's any specific company, larger company that you're interested in, maybe they do an information session online and they tell you, you know, how you should tailor your resume, what to expect in one of their interviews, how you can impress their panels, things like that. Um, there are just a lot of different events that are, that are going on. A lot of um, t career development topic ones like resume writing, um, interviewing skills, networking, um, uh, researching graduate school options, uh, just a lot of those, but you can see all these different virtual sessions that are available. So um, Bank of America, like I said, uh, Ian J. Gallo Winery, large employers doing information sessions in here, Edward Jones. Um, and sometimes it's, it's a large company or a mid-sized company that's just doing a, a virtual career development presentation that's not even about them specifically. They're just presenting helpful job search skills for students. So this is a great place to find on online career events for global campus students. The other place I said um, is the Alumni Association and that website is alumni.wsu.edu. Um, and on this bar at the top here, there's an event section. And you can just filter by types to find career development events. Um, and the career expos, the career fair that we got, the virtual career fair that we've had. Um, there's also a recent grad networking night uh, online tonight, so that already happened. Um, other career development topics, one that I'm doing on November 5th, Find the Right Career 2020, which is a career interest assessment webinar. So if you're interested in doing that, you can find information there or on the Connections uh, website and also in the student newsletter where we also send out information. Um, about all these online goings on. Um, and like I said, even though this is the Alumni Association, many of these are available to current students also. So uh, just another option for you as a global campus student to find online career events. Moving forward, career assessment is um, one of the areas that I focus on a lot with students because I think it's really helpful for students, for many different types of students. So for prospective students that are coming in and trying to find, you know, selecting the major for them, I almost always make them go through a free career, career assessment to kind of get them a better picture of how their interests and um, disinterest play a part in selecting an academic major and potentially a future career. And um, there are a lot of different assessment areas that I can help students with. So like I said, interests, work values, um, work personality, and also skills. And so, um, like I said, I usually have people do the ONET interest profiler first. It's a free Hall and Code based career assessment. And I won't get too much into the details about what that means. If I'm working with you one on one, I'll share a lot more information. Um, but uh, I guess the best way for me to do it is I'll, I'll show you where, where you could find it. You don't really have to write this down because if you're working with me, I would just send you all the information. Um, and then I'll show you what uh, the, a sample of the strong interest inventory looks like. And that is available to global campus students, just like the Myers-Briggs is available to global campus students um, for $15 each. And so depending on what their focus is, I would, I would kind of suggest one over the other, or maybe both in some instances, some students do like to take both. Um, but if they're taking a career assessment for career exploration to kind of say, hey, 
I need to figure out what is a good option for me based on my interests and 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 um, skills then you know I would say definitely strong interest inventory or if it's like I kind of know what I want to do and I'm trying to figure out how I can use my own um, personal personality and values and communication style and like how I interact with the world and others to figure out specifically within different industries where I might want to be then the Myers-Briggs is probably a better assessment um, and so I'll show you I'll show you a sample of the strong interest inventory, which is a more in-depth version of that one on the top, the free career interest assessment, the ONET interest profiler. And then the focus two is also an option that also hits on all these different parts. It's free for students. I'll show you where it is. I would say it's not as in-depth as the strong interest inventory, I mean, nor the Myers-Briggs, but it's just a nice um, introductory assessment tool that'll hit on different that it hit on different assessment areas. It's like, you know, a mile wide and uh, an inch deep kind of a thing. So um, let me show you some of those things. So the own interest profiler, again, you don't really need to know the website for this. Just if you're interested in career assessment, then get in contact, get in touch with me. Again, cmiller66 at wsu.edu. Uh, that is, is my email and the contact info will be at the end. But if you're going to start the process, this is the thing that I would have you start with first, just to make sure it's a meaningful exercise for you, just so, you know, you don't have to spend the 15 or $30, depending on what you want to do with career assessment. Um, and so what it would do is give you something that's a little, is, is a boiled down version of what this is, the strong interest inventory. And so this is the main interest assessment um, tool that's available for WSU students. Like I said, it's fifteen dollars. Here's a sample. Here's what a sample one looks like. Here's Martin's sample. Excellent student. Um, it kind of tells you the things I've been saying. How um, it, it'll take your interest patterns, so your interest and disinterest, and compare them in a gender normed way. To, so to either men or women, depending on how you identify, um, and it'll look at people who have identified themselves with a certain interest pattern by doing this assessment also, but also enjoying the job that they have, the work that they do, um, based on a different number of criteria. So the idea being, if you have a similar interest and disinterest pattern as a, a man or a woman in a career, in a given career, so they have a similar interest and disinterest pattern as you, and they like the work that they do, the suggestion is that you might also enjoy that work. Know, based on your interests, based on your skills competence um, in these different areas. So these, I don't want to get too much into the, the Holland hexagon, which is something I would do with you one-on-one -on -one if you took this assessment, but um, it'll, it'll give you a type based on your assessment areas and it'll break down more like larger job cluster areas, industries. So sales, management, um, politics and public speaking here for this enterprising type. How do you score in each of those areas? Um, and for social, social sciences, human resources and training, how do you score in those areas and so on and so forth. And then it'll break it down even farther, or further I should say, um, in the occupational scale. So for a specific job, for a life insurance agent, whoever Martin Sample is, um, the way he scored with a standard score of 66, he shares interests with men in that occupation and probably would enjoy the work. So that's, that's kind of the basis of this test. And there are 120, I think that are listed in here, 130 occupations, so specific occupations. And a lot of this is just a starting point for you to research further. Um, so, and that's something, again, if I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I'll help you do that. And I will a little bit, in just a minute here, show you a, a good career researching tool that's available for you. But that's just kind of a, a glimpse at career assessment opportunities for global campus students. Um, I mentioned focus two also uh, is, where's a good place to get back to ASCC and handshake here. Okay, let's get out of handshake. If it'll let me do it that way, do it the easier way. Back to ASCC.wsu.edu. Under overview, um, it's kind of hidden here and it's like, that's why you don't really need to know specifically where these are. I would send this to you. Under career coaching and assessment, there's the focus two tab. Um, so I would I would send that to you also. You need a registration code for that too. So just so you know, I just want you to know where it is. 
Um, so those are some of the career assessment options for global campus students. Um, some other resources to highlight, uh, our website, so the Global Campus Career Support website where a lot of my um, brief information is and how to get in touch with me. Uh, the ASCC website, I'll show you again some of the things to highlight there. And then the Occupational Outlook Handbook is a researching tool that I was recommending before. Let me show you some of those things. Uh, so, so of course, online.wsu.edu. Where did I hide you? Here we go. Let's go back home. Uh, under current students, you don't have to be a current student to sign in, so I'll show you where that is. Um, if you were a prospective student, you can get in here also. Um, under current students, under career support services, I'll just go to overview. Um, it just talks about some of the different categories, like I've already talked about earlier on as a career advisor, the things that I can help you with. Um, so how to request a meeting, there's a request, um, request services form here that prompts me to get in touch with you and to gather some information about what you're interested in specifically with career advising. Um, the class, like I talked about, choosing a major, career assessments, the blog, all these different topics are here. So all those things are there. I've already highlighted most of them. I just wanted you to know that it's there for us as Global Campus also, not just on the Pullman website. Um, the, ASCC page, the ASCC page again. Um, go back to Career Services Overview tab again. There are a lot of great resources here. So there's resume worded, what can I do with this major? Candid Career is another career researching tool that I would recommend people check out. Parker Dewey is, a, is an internship program, um, like micro inter internship. So a lot of this is completing more short-term projects for companies. So that's a cool um, internship option for students too. And then information packets. I think that's probably the first one to highlight. So whenever you're, you know, trying to put a resume together or you're starting a job search, um, interviewing tips, grad school search packet, there's information here. Um, just to quickly look at the resume one, this is the older one. They, there's a 2021 that's hiding. Um, left, side, left side menu again, resumes and cover letter. They just need to update that link. Uh, ASCC resume packet, this is the 2021. So this is a more updated version, just so you know, there's a newer one. They're both, they're both still, the 2018 is still highly relevant. Um, so different parts of a resume to give you ideas of different sections to fill in. Like I said earlier, if you want a resume review, I'm here to do that for you. Um, how to write effective resume sentences. Um, I shouldn't say sentences, resume content. Um, resume action words to you, so you're not, you're trying to avoid being repetitive. Um, some competencies to focus on. Just close that out. I thought that was already closed. Um, we got here resume samples. Different resume samples. So based on what you're doing, there's a chronological, a functional, technical, a science one. There's the technical. Um, and then there's gonna be a little cover letter bit at the end. Gives you an idea how to you know, produce content for a cover letter as well. So really good information here in the resume packet. Again, there's a interviewing packet, a job search packet, a career or a uh, graduate school packet too. Let's go back to the overview, even though some of those things I wanna look at are right there. Um, resume worded is a really cool tool. Um, uh, this video doesn't have sound, I won't, I won't show it. Um, it's basically to help students beat ATS software if they're applying for a job. So any applicant tracking software that a company might use that scans your resume, where they're just, you know, putting resumes essentially, you know, not, not actually through a machine, but through a technological imaginary machine that scans out people um, based on the content of the resume. So this, this tool, you basically sign in, you copy and paste the, the information from a job posting, you copy and paste your resume content, and I'll do a compare and contrast um, 
it'll run a compare and contrast on it to show you what you need to focus on, uh, what you've done a good job of touching on in your resume, what you need to focus on improving, other things that you may have missed. So it's called Resume Worded. It's a really cool tool for anyone who's job searching and turning in resumes. Um, so that's Resume Worded. What can I do with this major is a fun little linking academic majors to careers exercise. Um, you know, the case, the, the fact is that for most jobs, you don't need a specific major. Just having an undergraduate degree improves your chances of finding employment and finding um, employment that, you know, that pays better compared to others that don't have undergraduate degrees. So, but, but for someone who's just looking as like a starting point of getting options based on their major, you know, this is something you can do. I already did human development. Um, I'll do a business one. And for what we have, we have business, we have analytics, we have accounting. Analytics is interesting because we have data analytics. So just giving you an idea of some different analytics areas for this one specifically, some different types of employers, some strategies for seeking employment in those areas. Um, this one for operations management, the first one was business analytics, right? Yeah. Um, so for different areas, banking and finance, for insurance, for management and so on and so forth. So this is a cool resource too. Um, and the last uh, resource that I wanted to share with you for career researching is the Occupational Outlook Handbook. Um, the website for that is bls.gov slash OOH. So this is the US Bureau of Labor Statistics publication. So it used to be print of, you know, for you know hundreds of jobs and job clusters that exist in the country, what is the outlook for those jobs? Is it, is it a good area to get into as you're doing career research? Is it an area of growth? Is it an area of decline? Is it stagnant? What is it? Um, and so I usually, let's do a refresh just to see what they, featured occupations just change as you refresh the librarian here, private detective investigators, database administrators. Try to, I try to usually find something that's a little bit fun or wacky and it's gonna stop. Um, Fashion, let's see fashion designers. So there's different ways to use it. There's an A through Z index. You can just look at how jobs or job clusters are, are listed alphabetically. Um, you can just do a search at the search bar at the top. Um, I'm gonna look at fashion designers just to show you the different areas um, for whatever it may be that you're researching. So there's a summary of what the job is. There's these tabs at the top is how you kind of search through. So what they do, um, what do fashion designers do? So duties, they uh, study fashion trends and anticipate designs that will appeal to consumers. They decide on a theme for a collection. They use CAD programs to create designs um, and so on and so forth. What is the work environment like uh, for fashion designers? Uh, working house for wholesales or manufacturers and so on, a lot of information there. How do you become one? So how do you prepare for a given career that you're interested in? Um, Many designers have a bachelor's degree in fashion or fashion merchandising. Um, and so uh, you might find something you're interested in doesn't require, require a degree at all. Something may require a graduate degree or higher. So um, what is the pay like for each one? So it has good salary information that's broken down uh, in different ways for different jobs. Uh, so this one, fashion designers versus art and design workers, there's a big significant difference there. So how it gets its name, the job outlook, uh, employment of fashion designers is projected to decline 4% from 2019 to 2029. So in the next nine years here, it's uh, gonna be declining. And as they collect this information, you know, they're not, they're not collecting data for, you know, every job at the same time, because that would just be an overwhelming task, impossible task to do. So they, they just update this as, as the data comes in for each one. So it'll be really interesting to see as 2020 data starts to populate the Outlook Handbook to see, you know, which areas are declining more severely and which ones are growing more significantly. Um, some statistical data based on where you live. If you find a career that you're interested in, but maybe there, it doesn't pay enough or there's too much education required to prepare for it, maybe you wanna look at a similar occupation. So those are there. And then the more info tab is really helpful too from a research and networking perspective, because um, it'll give you information usually about 
professional associations uh, that you can connect with to find out more about the career, um, to connect with people that are doing it, to do informational interviews, to figure out how you can best prepare and find out more about what to expect if this is something you wanna pursue. So again, this is the Occupational Outlook Handbook, bls.gov slash OOH. Um, and again, all these things that I'm highlighting, I can share with you personally, if you just contact me, um, I can, you know, get you these resources. Um, let's see. I believe that brings us to the end of the other resources I wanted to share and the end of the presentation here. So thank you so much for attending and I'll stick around for any questions you may have. Let me know. And like I said, here's my, my uh, contact information here. And if you want to get in touch with me, the best way to start is to send me an email and I can get you that career uh, services request form or you can just fill that, fill that out directly from the online.wsu.edu website also. So again, thank you so much for attending. Let me know if you have any questions.